Hi everybody, Captain Bill Safe the Third on the back deck of the Safe Charter 5. Barely got the sixth rod in the water and we're up on the real estate run just west of Paltneyville, New York. Clear, clear water. You can look at it, it's just gin clear here over the side. When that happens, you need to get on the water early, work the shoreline tight, pluck all the easy biters, and then look for a green water spike, anything that's turbid, any change. Temperature on a clear, clear day like this is not the determining factor like it is in general turbid water conditions. I would rather have a two degree drop, but find a spike of green water where there's some sediment up in the water column where you can get on and work those fish. Even though we know that browns are locating in five to seven feet of water on the shoreline, if that green water spikes in 15 to 20 feet, that's where we need to put the boat. On the rod, my old pal from Team Death Row, <laughs> Kyle Brunarski. Usually roughing up dabbling ducks or diving ducks with old Uncle Bill somewhere in the Finger Lakes or on Lake Ontario, but today he's tied on a brown. This guy's got some weight, doesn't it? Oh yeah. He's fighting pretty good. He's got a good bend in the rod right here. As this fish gets a little bit closer, we'll come on back to the action. Now we've given you a great tip about what to look for on clear water days and how you make your choice about where you fish and how you fish. Work the skinny water early, but then look for the spike. Back right up for me. Back up, back up, and we got him. Forward ridge, give me some speed. Get those baits up oh, on the bottom. Brown coming on a natural bait. Not not uncommon in this water. There's the PK spoon. There's a pretty spoon. good brown coming on the deck of the Safe Charter 5 right here. There's that PK spoon. Holographic oval underneath that with the glow green tape over the top. A solid producer. When we have to go to natural colors in skinny clear water, that's what we're going to pick. A nice, nice brown right there. How'd he fight, big boy? Oh, he fought all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we got a tip on what to do in that skinny clear water, how to find the green spike. I've also got a great tip for you on how to maximize the table fare of brown trout once you get them to land and it's time to cut those fish and make them ready for the table. Let's go shore side for the tip on cleaning these browns. Hi everybody, Captain Bill Safe the Third. Going to give you a tip today on cleaning your brown trout and I'm going to show you a way with a straight blade to make cleaning your brown a little bit easier. Get the fatty tissue off that fish, make it better table fare at the end of the day. You've watched our fish cleaning videos in the past, but I'm just going to show you a tip that I never shared in either one of those videos. If you take a look at this brown, I put him on the table. He's been bled out, but in order to get to the fillet, I'm just going to take this belly section out, take a sharp knife and I just come through this belly section and I clean that up. And then what I like to do is remove the entrails from that brown. I just cut them out of the way. That gives me access. It's always easier to work a fillet from the backbone side of the fish. So by taking the entrails out, I can get at this brown trout from the near side, from the belly side. I'm going to come in at an angle here behind the head and I'm going to go down until I touch the backbone. Then I'm going to slide that knife along the back of the fish. I'm going to work it down to the tail. Now watch. As I open that fillet up and lay it on the table, most people are going to put the blade down here. We're going to come down tight against the underside of the skin and we're going to pull that off. Now when we roll that fillet over, let's take a look at it. You see all the dark that we have. You know that we like to cut the lateral line out because that's where most of the oils and fats are, right down the center section of this. But look at all the fat that I've got uniformly over the top of that fillet. Let's just move that over here. I'm going to flip this in. Now I'm going to attack the back side and we're going to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to come right down to the backbone. <clears throat> I'm going to come right down the back of this fish. Just like I did on the front side, we're going to flip that over. This time, we're going to come down, and when we hit that edge, we're just going to cheat up a little bit, and we're not going to ride the knife quite so hard against that skin tissue area. Now when we take that fillet off, look what I've got. You're going to see a marked difference. There's the fillet. The fatty tissue area is left on the skin. 
And now the only thing that we have on the top of this fillet is that little bit of a lateral line. Now by taking your knife, coming down at an angle with whatever lateral lines left, we're going to take that out. We're going to remove that. Basically, you have a fat-free, pollutant-free fish. This type of fillet is going to be considerably better table fare. Now it's simply a matter of tipping your fillet over, taking the rib cage bones out and the pin bones, and you've got exactly what you need to prepare a great meal on the barbecue grill or chunk it up and batter dip it and deep fry that brown trout. Just don't put quite so much pressure down on the blade. Bring that right down along the skin. Leave that fatty tissue area on the skin, not on your fillet. Your brown trout are going to taste a lot better. I'm Captain Bill Safe the Third. That's your tip on filleting brown trout and making them better table fare.